We also saw the return of Crystal Dunn. What a huge milestone for this player um, and, and for women, right? I'm just going to go out there and say that because Crystal Dunn um, was out for maternity leave for a, a majority of 2022, and she ends up returning to the pitch following the birth of her son, Marcel. Uh, Marcel was born in May, um, and then in September, Dunn was back training with the United States in their training camp, and by November, she had made the the full training roster and she was available for selection. We got to see Dunn playing again by the end of November for three caps in 2022 after she gave birth in May. That was uh, fantastic to see, right? Coming back into the swing of things, getting some time in those matches, playing in the left outside back role, giving Emily Fox a little bit of a breather in some of those matches. Uh, but this was a milestone that I was so pleased and happy to see. And we knew that Crystal Dunn was fighting for this. She wanted to get back on the pitch. She continued training with her club team, Portland Thorns, throughout the majority of 2022, pretty much up until she gave birth. And then as soon as doctors would allow her back on the pitch after she gave birth. And, and the fact that she worked so hard, um, was fighting, was listening to her body, was, was working with incredible doctors to be able to play in an international friendly by the end of the year of 20. 2022. Um, I mean, she's in, she's a superwoman, super mom. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. It was, I think, one of the stories that kind of came towards the latter end of 2022 that everybody was just like, if if no one else, of course, Crystal Dunn. Yeah, right. It was a, uh, it was quite a, uh, quite a performance to to, to witness. Um, the United States, uh, you know, racking up other numbers in other areas, whether it's goal scored or attendance records, right? We talked a little bit about uh, the October window and how that took place overseas. United States versus England at Wembley had record attendance, 76,893 in the turnstiles to take a look at those two teams go head to head. It is the highest attended friendly in U.S. women's national team history. Tickets selling out, you know, in, in about a day or so. Um, exciting, exciting moment for the team this year. Huge for them to play at Wembley. Um, the the team in 2022 as a whole, they scored 56 goals this year, uh, 56 celebrations on the pitch that we got to watch. And one thing that really stuck out to me in these stats is that through 14 games, um, 26 of the goals were scored by players under the age of 24. So not only was were young players being called into the rosters and getting caps and getting minutes, but they were scoring goals and they were contributing. Um, uh, we saw it along the back line, right, with Gurma and really stepping into that role. And Alana Cook, another young one, Emily Fox along that back line as well. But up the pitch, they were scoring these goals. So 56 of them, 26 goals scored by players under the age of 24. So the future is very bright for this team and these players. The number one ranked team in the, amongst the FIFA rankings. And look, we should also talk about these players who were newer to the team because those are milestones as well. There are several players who earned first caps or made debuts. Let's talk about Sam Coffey a little bit. Earned her first cap at the CONCACAF W Championship. Finished the year with four caps and one star. Became the 250th player to earn a cap with the United States women's national team versus Nigeria. Played a full 90 in that game. Huge for Sam Coffey. We got to see uh, the start of her when she was called in late to the CONCACAF W Championship, but but she slotted in quite well. I mean, the defensive midfield position is still like a bit of a question mark. Vlako Adonofsky is looking for competition at that role, looking for someone to take over it. And with uh, a young player like Sam Coffey, she could be the answer. Uh, we've talked so much about this other player, defender Naomi Gurma. She earned her first senior national team camp this year, which is crazy to think about because by the end of the year with the October friendlies, the November friendlies, we were like, well, Gurma's got to be in the center. Oh, back. There's there's no way we could play without her. And it's crazy to think that this is only the first year that she's played with the senior national team getting capped. She's been called into camps before and she's gotten looks and she's been called up. But this was the first time that she got her very first cap. She started eight of the 10 games that she played this year. She even earned an assist in one of these. So she's getting points. She, she's getting on these this score sheet as well. And she had six 90-minute appearances. Uh, Gurma is the future of the center backs for this U.S. team. 
I love it. I love the numbers. I love the stats behind this player, Naomi Germa, the revelation. That's absolutely who she was in 2022. Shout out to goalkeeper Aubrey Kingsbury. Got her first and only cap in 2022, a 90-minute match during the She Believes Cup. Defender Carson Pickett also earning her first cap. Ended out the year with two caps and two starts. And defender Haley Mace also returned to the team this year as well. In light, again, of some injuries, right? We talked about injuries in that first half, but we saw Emily Fox go out with some injury. And we had Haley Mace uh, to take a look at and sort of slot in if needed. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about Trinity Rodman, Lisa. Trinity Rodman, um, this is another young player, 20 years old, that broke into the U.S. women's national team this year. Uh, she had seen sniffs. She was a namesake on the youth national teams for the United States, but um, – she ends this year with 10 caps, two goals, a vital part of, of this front line, but also incredibly young. Like this is the type of future that we're talking about. A 20 year old in, in Rodman getting into this team after a stellar rookie year in the NWSL that that's what, Got Vlako Andonovsky noticing her in, in 2021. Then 2022, she ends up making a difference. We also saw the likes of midfielder Taylor Korniak, who earned her first senior national team call up, she, or um, her first cap, excuse me. She ended up playing seven games in 2022. She even netted a goal, one for Taylor Korniak. Uh, we saw her appear in the CONCACAF W Championship. I mean, there were six players or seven players that made their debut this year, Sandra. Seven players. Look, it's hard to imagine that in the year leading up to a World Cup that you've still got a ton of players earning first caps or, or making those side of those sort of debuts and, and kind of hitting those types of milestones. But that happened in 2022 for, for this year. And honestly, I think that's um, a bit of a blessing. I think that's part of what comes with the territory of being the number one ranked team in the world, of, of being the team that has this reputation of a strong program, of a strong pool of players. And we got even more glimpses into the future because Alyssa Thompson, 18 years old, got her first call up and earned two caps became the youngest player called up for a full national team camp since Sophia Smith, who was 16 in 2017. Alyssa Thompson, this was a name that when the roster dropped, a lot of people were like, who is she? Who is she? I know we went live on here on Attacking Third on YouTube and people in our comments were like, how do we know her? Who is she? Is she in college? What is she doing? No, she's 18 years old. She's not in college yet. And she was playing um, in the October European tour with this United States team. I mean, this is a, a player that proved herself right playing with the boys team a u17 boys team and ends up uh coming in and, and making a difference she's been in the youth programs but this first senior national team call up um and, and two caps for her the future is incredibly bright there were so many milestones yeah. so many debuts for players so many uh moments of history made with the signing of the cba and the world cup being announced and the draw and all of these players getting their debut seven of them this year it's it was a very good year for the U.S. in 2022. It absolutely was. Future's bright. The World Cup is next. We got next in the World Cup. 2023 is on the horizon for this team. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you all so much for joining and listening to Attacking Third. Download, follow, listen to us anywhere you get your podcast. You can watch us. Make sure you subscribe so you can see whenever we go live at youtube.com slash attacking third. And a reminder to please vote for attacking third in the best episode in the signal awards. It means so much to have your support link is in the episode description, or you can view our code in the YouTube video. Happy holidays, everyone have a great weekend for Sandra Herrera and Lisa Roman. This was attacking third.